Round number three, the Battle of Quinty, the Wellington Dukes, and the Trenton Golden Hawks set to go, and it's a very special night here in Quinty West with John McDonald, the longtime director of hockey operations for the Golden Hawks, being honored right at center ice for all the great work he's done here throughout his career as well as in Trenton since the 2010-2011 season. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brock Ormond alongside Zach McGibbon here on your TV Quinty as well as on Flow Hockey in this presentation of the OJHL tonight back in Trenton for the first time in 2024. So a belated Happy New Year and great to have everybody along with us. It should be a fantastic night, Zach. Crowds are packed and it in fact is a sellout. It was a standing room only as of last check and I imagine all those uh, spots are going to be filled uh, pretty tight here in the uh, Duncan McDonald Community Gardens. Yeah, they just announced it. A sellout here for tonight's game, and you can just see it in the crowd as well. It is packed to the rim. They're hanging from the rafters here at the Duncan McDonald Memorial Community Gardens, and why not? Because it's quite the game here. You know, it's a, it's a rivalry game, and the third round, as you mentioned, and so you expect these two to really bring it their all, especially with their last two matchups. You may have seen him in his office, or down the hallways, or perched up in his VIP box like Harold Ballard or Statler and Waldorf. John's career has included a game in the National Hockey League, years of professional playing, coaching in Junior C, Junior B, the OPJHL, and the OJHL, and with the OHL as well. He has served in the roles of Director of Operations, Coach, and General Manager. Johnny Mack was also the catcher for Team Canada at the 1972 World Fastball Championship in the Philippines. Sandy, will you do the honor of our final tribute this evening for John McDonald? One more time for John McDonald. At this time, we ask both captains to please make their way to center ice for tonight's official puck drop. We ask our dignitaries to please remain in their positions. As Shane Chalesse getting the nod for the Wellington Dukes as uh, everybody files off the ice, off the red carpet. What a great uh, honoring and a great ceremony for John McDonald, a guy that uh, a lot of people had a lot of fond things to say about, that's for sure. And, uh, Zach, as we introduce the starting goalies, uh, just a quick uh, thought on John McDonald. And I know you've only known him for a short time, but uh, what has he kind of meant uh, in your mind to this Golden Knox organization? Oh, yeah, right away you knew when you met John McDonald, he was quite the character. And he has a presence over this organization, and you could see it there, connecting with a whole bunch of players and staff all throughout his time here in Trenton. Just a tremendous ceremony. i really excited to talk with him as well during this broadcast. For sure, we'll have that uh, conversation with him in the second intermission. Shane Chalesse has mentioned getting the nod for the Dukes. It's his second straight start after he got the victory over the Coburg Cougars on Sunday afternoon in the Dukes' fourth straight win, a 4-2 triumph. And Brady Spry, who's pretty much taken the ball and ran with it with the absence of Ben Bonestiel, who uh, recently committed to Canisius College, but he has been out uh, with a lower body injury. So in comes Brady Spry, the Belleville native, has been outstanding. He's only lost once this season. That was the last Trenton loss before Christmas back on December the 22nd against Stouffville. Neither team, in fact, Zach, has lost in the year of 2024 so far. Wellington on a four-game streak after losing on New Year. Out of the house comes Will Mitchell. He'll scamper to center and then flick it in diagonally to the near side corner. Trenton pouncing on it. Just as quick to get it ahead. Barrett Joint, the ex-Duke, will sweep it in. He's got a new career high in points. Puck turned over, they score. Corbin Roach off the turnover behind the net. Very similar to that of the goal that won the game back on December 17th for the Golden Hawks. A turnover by the Dukes defense behind the goal line, and it results in another key offensive player for Trenton coming up with the reward. It's Corbin Roach burning his old team. 
Yeah, what a way to take advantage of a mistake there. Just taking too much time, didn't read the play properly and just went straight to Corbin Roach. And Roach just had a wide open net there in order to take advantage. And just like that, the Trenton Golden Hawks are already up on the board. Harris wearing the C on his sweater for the Dukes. He'll throw a right on goal. That unless it's a huge rebound. But again, Connor Hunt comes by and whips on it. So two rebound attempts for the Dukes and no goals. Here come the G-Hawks. They have the chance. Artichuk back and forth. Omara, what a move and what a goal. Adam Omara. you got to love that. 2-0. Trenton leads it as the captain undresses Gene Shalestin. We'll see what Kent Lewis decides to do here because Shalest is looking very shaky right now, right off the bat. See if maybe he goes with Jack Listen to try and throw the momentum back the other way. Boy, what a beautiful goal this was. Patience with the puck, able to finagle his way around, going to the crease and getting it by. That's one for the highlight reel there, Brock. Another goal here for Trenton, already setting the tone here at the Duncan McDonald Memorial Community Gardens. 9.51 left to go in period at number one. It's a 2 0. The Golden Hawks lead. Duke's trying to get one back, though. Puck's still free in there. They jab away at it. But Spry, Spread Eagle is going to hold that one out. And the goal line stand keeps this game 2 0. Trenton as Sitlani fires it in off of that fill in at center ice. Like you said, Zach, physicality brewing. Here's a chance now. Mitchell wrapping around back of the goal. Sweeps it out in front. That one's going to miss by everybody. His line, and then he gets crunched into by the former Duke, Luke Lapon. Stretch feet sent ahead. Roach dashing in. Nips the back. 10 feet over for Joint. And he scaled it over the net. A little bit too trigger happy there with Joint. Here comes Scott now in reverse. Transition play will end up in the stick of Brugenhill. His backhand attempt's going to skip off the stick and sail out. And then a late hit applied on Ben Brugenhill. The 20 red and back inside the Duncan McDonald Community Gardens, a.k.a. the hangar, for second period action between the Trenton Golden Hawks and Wellington Dukes. Brock Ramon, Zach McGibbon back with Perry. Diagonal pass just barely tipped in by Brad Barker, who was almost off balance. Golden Hawks get it back again as Ellis fries it away. Feeds it right on the tape of Pickle. Pickle firing it in, looking to try and negate the icing. Fournier does get in there, and he's tripped up en route to the goal. That one's going to be a penalty, and for the first time, the Dukes are going to get a penalty in this game, and in fact, it's the first one of the night. Back hands it on to Kylo Ellis. Reached by Montgomery Parsons. Matthews trying to clear. Sealed off on the right boards, and then Ellis, who is behind Matthews, pulls it out. Snaps it across, and then it's gone back the other way. So playing a little crisscross game. Centering pass out front. They score. Teo Artichuk in front of the net on a harmless-looking pass from behind the net. And he snapped one over the glove as Gilleste. It's 3-0 Trenton. 7-16 to go in the second. And that's what happens when you start crisscrossing over. You force the D to go all different areas. Leaves Artichuk wide open. Yeah, great call there, Brock. It's just wide open space. All the time in the world to get the shot, able to lure the Wellington Dukes off to the side. And again, gives them a prime opportunity. Celeste had no chance on that. It goes through. It's now 3 0 for the Trenton Goldhawks. Ample gets it up ahead to Ben Pickle. Slid forward to Fournier. David Fournier ventures into the left side. Circle fires and scores. David Fournier whips one home over the glove of Celeste off the rush. He cut right from the left to the right, crossed over the Dukes D and let one fly. Celeste couldn't do anything about it. And Trenton, quick, two more quick goals, puts them up by a quartet to make it 4 0. Yeah, great patience here from Fournier, able to make a little bit of a move there to try and create that separation. Found his spot, was able to get it by Celeste. And David Fournier able to get it through. As you mentioned, Brock, another quick goal there. All of a sudden, it's 4 0 and really starting to pull away here are the Trenton Golden Hawks. Got it. Another crack maybe coming from Mitchell. Instead, it's swept away by Kuipers, and then Setlani got caught pitching too far. Here comes Kuipers flying in with a move to the right. And a great stop by Shales going right with him to close off that low side post that he was trying to tuck it in. Trying again here, Mitchell from center ice. In the meantime, there's a fight going on behind the play. It's Dimitri Seferis getting tangled up. And I can't quite see who the Golden Hawk is. It might be Piper's. He's trying to see the helmet number. That looks to be Johnny DeVita, Johnny DeVita, DeVita that's in there. Yep. And Seferis is trying to do this to pump his team up. His team's down by four, and it's not going to be easy to get back in this type of a game. And Seferis just screamed right in somebody's face in the Trenton bench likely that he might be done for at least well for sure the period but possibly the game too because the gloves did come off the helmet was ripped off as well 
And Dimitri Seferis is the captain doing what he ought to do, and that's try and get his team pumped up. And you can see DeVito rip the bucket right off and they replay it on your TV 20 feed. But then with the glove punch, Seferis takes it right to the face of Gianni DeVito. And you can tell that's out of pure frustration and indignity. Like for Seferis, he's probably thinking, what the heck do we have to do to get back in this game? Because Trent has just been so good. And we're going to keep that going here. They're up by four, trying to add to their point streak, get it to seven games. There's a snap pass over. Scott leans into one, scores. Far down shot, Ryan Scott. And the Dukes get on the board here with 3.15 left in the second. Boy, did the visitors need that one in the worst way possible to at least attempt, at least have a chance to get back. Scott got open, he found his lane, he loads, he fires, and he slings it far down on Spry. Yeah, as you mentioned, he was able to find his spot, load it up, got it by Spry, and I, I don't think uh, Spry was locating that correctly, and obviously Scott was able to take advantage and get this Wellington Duke squad on the board. Speeding in, clearing the zone with no problem at all is Corey Jewett. He'll backhand it in behind the goal after Midas closes in. Got squeezed out of the picture again by Ellis and Dylan Stiles, and that forces the play to end in the Trenton zone as Ellis and Hunt go at it, jabbing at each other with sticks. And the line's been in there to quickly separate them, and it doesn't appear like anything further will come out of it. Quite the game so far, 4-1 Trenton leads though. They're 20 minutes away from extending their point streak to seven games. Wellington trying to desperately come back and keep. Trenton Golden Hawks are 20 minutes away from winning their third game in as many tries against the Wellington Dukes this season after winning only one during the regular season last year. Of course, we know what happened in round three of the Buckland Cup playoffs. Golden Hawks, Van De Ven and Quicker both off for the roughing minors that occurred after the cover up by Spry. Here's Roach now, screaming away through the middle. He's got a short air breakaway in, tight off the backhand, and he hit the side of the net. That one would have been lights out for the Dukes if he had a score. Here's a chance now again off the breakdown. That pass easily picked off by Sitlani. Ellis was looking down low for Roach. Trenton guys look up at the clock. It's all over for them. Romolo trying to charge in as Trenton just puts a force field in front of the goaltender. Romolo still getting shoved away from the boards, and that's it. Trenton Golden Hawks with a scoreless third period, run away with a 4-1 victory, out shooting the Dukes 34-27. They are 3-0 in the Battle of Quinty, circa 2023-24. Shane Celesto, the nice performance, all things considered. He got off to a shaky start, the turnover, and then the nice move by Adam Omara, and that was pretty much it. It's a tough, uh, tough road to hold for the Dukes, but they will fall to 27-16, one and one in the year. The Golden Hawks, Seven straight games to the point. They improved to 34, 7, 1, and 1, including 19, 2, 0, and 1 here at the hangar. And Zach, as we get to our three stars, Trenton did what they had to do. They took an early lead, and then they added to it and pretty much just rolled from there. Yeah, it really just started in the first minute and then continued on from there and able to set a tone. And and all aspects of the game for the Trenton Golden Hawks, they were able to get themselves uh, accomplished and able to get the job done. Three stars tonight, Ryan Scott with the only Wellington goal, his 21st of the year. Brady Spry with a 26 save effort. He continues to be a revelation with the absence of Ben Bonestiel. And first star is Corbin Roach with a goal. And uh, could have had a couple more tonight. He missed a couple of open nets, including a breakaway, but uh, very much earned all three of them for their uh, star performances. And Adam O'Mara should get an honorable mention. I, mean, I know he's gotten plenty of stars.